Hello and welcome. It is 1030. It is the ninth day of November 2021. It is a cold, sunny November morning here in Southern California, and I am your guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, controversy, speculation, and general internet nonsense that is the OGGM. And back by slightly popular demand, we're taking a look at all the fifth edition races that are optional character races um or i guess now official character races I, I i don't know if these are still optional or if there was some magic hand waving and now they're official like, it depends you know if you want them in your game they're in your game if you don't want them in your game they're not in your game it's really up to you and the people you play with uh so we're looking at volo's cookbook to monsters or volo's guide to monsters but really come on yeah it's a cookbook i mean look at the art um it's a cookbook. It's a cookbook. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 races. 13 races that were apparently interested in, in them, apparently appeared in Volos. Um, now here's where things get weird. Because I've got two copies of the table of contents from two different sources. One lists a certain group as the new player races and the other this is a slightly different list of races so um i guess i gotta go over to a store and actually look at the physical copy or there were two printings of volos and they changed something because yeah one of these is missing like th the first half and the other has all of them. So I'm assuming that the yours are all player character races that are available to play to you as options. Some slightly more optional than others, I guess, like bugbears, you know, or tritons. I mean, why would you play a triton unless you were in an ocean-based campaign where a triton would truly slot, shine? In a desert-based campaign, a triton would be like, oh, and I guess the same for UNT Pure Blood. So maybe that's why there's two different table of contents. So anyway, somebody with way more free time than me decided to post a poll to see which one of these were the most popular and least popular way to remain non-judgmental Wizards of the Coast. And, and the top voter was Asimir. Uh, Asimir? I think everybody calls it Asimir, but that's probably not actually how it's pronounced, right? So we're going to take a look at that one first uh, as an optional race. Why is that the most popular? Uh, it, it won by 55%. The next closest was Furbolg at only 6.9%. So, wow. <laughs> All the other races apparently suck compared to Asimir. <laughs> um, so why is this race so popular? I mean, other than, you know, they're the opposite of tieflings and they're half angels. Let's take a look at D&D &D Beyond and see what it says. Apparently D&D &D Beyond. Okay, here we go. D&D &D Beyond, what did you say about the Asimir other than they're half angels? Um, so you get a charisma score of plus two. Age, alignment, size doesn't matter anymore. Um... Though generally they are good, but we know Wizards of the Coast has changed the rules for age alignment and size, so whatever. Speed, walking speed is 30. They have dark vision of uh, 60 feet. Um, they have celestial resistance. You have resistance to necrotic and, re and radiant damage. Uh, how often do you run into radiant damage? Necrotic, you know, undead, that's kind of a thing, but not really. I mean, they're two really obscure damage types, so that's not that bad. Uh, healing hands. Uh, as an action, you could touch a creature and cause it to regain a number of hit points equal to your level. Once you use this trait, you can't use it again until a long rest. And they also know that the light cantrip. Hmm... But, you know, tieflings get a whole bunch of built-in spells, so I guess they're balanced is, must is balanced. They don't have flight, which, you know, even though they are often pictured with um, wings, they do not have 
flight. Uh, let's double check to make sure we got all that correct. And the only race they know is humans and celestials. Uh, apparently there are, are there war some uh, alternate uh, Asimers available, which is strange because there weren't off alternate um, tieflings made available. At least I haven't seen them yet, but they might be in a different book. Uh, so, yeah. So this is probably homebrew because they're not in the follows. Oh, wait, yeah, they are. Okay. Uh, there are the two sub races are Protector and Scourge. Which means somewhere there must be sub races for Tiefling, and I just haven't found them yet. If you take the Protector Asimir, you get an additional Wisdom score of plus one, and you get something called Radiant Soul. Starting at third level, you can use your action to unleash a divine energy within yourself, causing your eyes to glimmer and two luminous incorporeal rings to sprout from your back. Your transformation lasts one minute or until you end it as a bonus action. During it, you have flying speed of 30 feet, and once on each of your turn, you can deal extra radiant damage to one target when you deal damage to with an attack or spell. Your extra radiant damage equals your level. You, once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you finish the long rest. Uh, do tieflings get something similar? Because, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Scourge, Asimir. You can take a bonus of constitution to plus one, and you have radiant consumption. Starting at third level, you can use your action to unleash the divine energy within yourself, causing a searing light to radiate from you, pour from your eyes and mouth, and threaten to char you. Your transformation lasts one minute or until you end it, during which you shed light at a 10-foot radius and dim light at an additional 10-foot radius on each of your turns. You and each creature within 10 feet of you take radiant damage equal to your level. Ouch. In addition, once on each turn, you can deal extra radiant damage to one target when you do damage to it. With an attack or spell, the extra radiation damage equals your level. Once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you finish your long list. So, let's read that again. You sh during the th during the minute that this consumption is at uh, action, at the end of each of your turns, you and each creature within ten feet of you take radiant damage equal to half your level. Since it starts at third level, that means everybody's going to take one point of radiant damage if they're within ten feet of you. And you can also choose to do an extra amount of radiant damage equal to your level. So if radiant consumption counts as an attack, then you could just be doing four points of radiant damage every round without doing anything to both friends and foes as long as they're within 10 feet. So yeah, so did tieflings get uh, boosts or just a summer? If that's... With a Samer only, let's take a look. Tiefling 5e. Mm. Mm. Nope. Um. Okay, I, in um, Mordekainen's, they added bloodlines that tieflings could take. Uh, and, and Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide added a tiefling variant. Uh, so yes, there was the same thing added for tieflings apparently in um, Mordekanans. We have the bloodline of Asmodeus, bloodline of Beelzebub, Bloodline of Despatter, Bloodline of Ferna, Bloodline of Glacia, and Bloodline of Levictus, and Bloodline of Mammon, and Bloodline of Mephistophanes, because of course all of these, you know, and Bloodline, oh, there's another one, and Bloodline of Zeriel. Yeah, so, you know, basically, yeah. Not only are you, if you're a tiefling, you're somehow related to a demon or devil, nope. If you're a tiefling, you're somehow related to a major league <laughs> demon or devil. Not just some random, everyday, run-of-the-mill, normal devil named Frank or demon named Steve that came by and had some interaction with your family to allow you to become a tiefling. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're half human, half major league demon. Not You, you know, you can just go about saying, yeah, my, my dad's 
Orcus. How come Bloodline of Orcus isn't on here? Uh, Levictus, if that name sounds familiar, was the name of the major demon from the Hellraiser series, I believe. Uh, Asmodeus and Mephistophanes, of course, being the two big bad devils. I don't see any of the demons mentioned. These are all devils. Uh, where's Orcus? Where's, uh, you know, Demogorgon? They're probably in a different one. So, yes, uh, Tieflings apparently got bo boasts too in Mordekainens, but Mordekainens I thought was just for NPCs and monsters, but I guess they did hide some player character nonsense in there as well. But there we go, the Asimir for 5th edition. And yes, I guess I can see why they re won the popularity contest by 55% considering they, you know, the built-in ability to do four points of damage every round to anybody within 10 feet, including to yourself, or fly for a minute. Yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. Anyways, that is number one. The next one on the list at 6% is Fear Bulls. We'll do that tomorrow. If you are interested in seeing me do this, let me know. If you think I should stop this now, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me reach... 1,000 subs. Till next time, I am the OGGM, wishing you a great day. Get off my land.